seen significant growth that even in the last five years, the record industry has almost doubled in size, in revenue, and that creates with it new jobs. With the invent of technology, we've got it's easy for artists to self-produce at a professional level. Social media has found new and exciting ways for people to be able to launch their work and lots of different ways to connect. We are going to unpack that and help you right now be on your way or take your career to the next level. So many different ways that you can look at it and we have an incredible group of people to share their experiences, their tips, and we're gonna look at things from a whole bunch of angles. So forget what you thought that you knew about careers in music, entertainment, and the arts, because we're gonna flip it on its head and show you just how much opportunity that there is. Now, we will be taking questions in the Q&A chat, so please post them if you want to know about careers in music, entertainment and arts, or if you think that maybe studying at Australian Institute of Music, Australia's only specialist music higher education uh, centre, and we're so lucky we're in Melbourne and Sydney, which are great cultural cities, post your questions in the Q&A, and I'm going to be talking to some pretty incredible people, leaders and artists um, in the music and creative industries. So we will be posting uh, announcements there so you can go and explore further. So great links and things like that. Make sure you do that. And now I think it's time that I do what I promised and that is bring on one of my most incredible guests so that we are first going to look at it from the side of the big business, from the record industry. And my first guest is incredible. He has been playing the guitar since he was eight. And by guitar, I mean the rock guitar. And he has worked with all of the household names from the recording industry that you've all heard of. He has met people who've played stadiums and probably has some incredible stories to tell. But his journey in music is incredibly varied. Please welcome John Chalmers, Chief Executive Officer of Australian Institute of Music and someone with one of the most incredible careers in music. Welcome, John. Hi, Zoe. Hi, everybody. Thanks for having me. It's so great to have you here. Now, we've been talking about getting people to think a little bit differently about what a career in music, arts and entertainment can actually mean. Before you start trying to break into that, you have a career that is a really great example of you can have a love of music, but there's so many different directions. Can you take us through? I think it's a really great example for our audience out there. Yeah, sure, Zoe, happy to. I mean, I think with a little bit of uh, talent and perseverance and hard work, you can really make your own journey in the music industry. I, I always loved music. I loved writing as well. I started guitar when I was about eight years old and did an arts degree at university. Uh, coming out of that, I was able to pick up a job reviewing music. So combining music and writing as a love and became a music journalist and then a music magazine editor for some of the biggest music mags here in Australia and ultimately for Rolling Stone magazine and the like and was able to move to New York City um, doing some of that work. So, you know, I was very fortunate. It actually all began, though, for the people on this call uh, that are overseas that might be coming to join us here at AIM um, with my grandmother, who was from Egypt. She was from Cairo. Um, she left there when her husband died after World War II. She came on a boat to Australia with no money, took a cleaning job uh, to be able to afford a piano because the one skill she had was a very, very good piano teacher uh, and player. And she started a, a piano school in a place called Manly, one of the big beaches here in Sydney. And that's where my dad grew up in a house, a small house with lots of pianos. And I remember that really, really well. And so it's taught me a lot about, I guess, the power of of music and education to, to transform lives because it then gave my dad a good education and, and here I am today as, as the CEO at, at, at AIM, Zoe. Yeah, and so these are all very different jobs and shifts in careers and but they're all interlinked to music and back to that passion for you. And I think that's a really great example for our audience in that you can take this in so many different directions. I have an important job in music, John. It doesn't pay so well. It's uh, the fan. So still an important job. Um, so really important one there. Now, just to get us started, I guess, how diverse are the jobs and the careers? Because you've seen so many sides of the industry. Um, what can you share sort of what kinds of jobs are out there? 
Well, Zoe, you, t- you told me you might ask that question. So I did a bit of homework and I started to think about just how many and how diverse the jobs are, are, are that are out there in the industry. There are more jobs than ever right now. It's a growing industry globally. And for the people on this call from all around the world, you know, it's quite varied what they might be coming to look for. So if I start at the start of the alphabet, I only got halfway, but I thought about an A&R manager, that's artist and repertoire, someone who chooses what the big new band might be, whether that's in K-pop or Australia or anywhere else in the world, um, they're selecting the tunes. An arranger, an accompanist, um, an artist manager, so looking after the band, a bass player, I'm on to be now, a broadcaster, a booking agent, a concert technician, a conductor, a community officer, a CEO like me, a composer, a concert promoter, a to D, a drummer, a DJ, <laughs> or a data analyst. And there is a need for those in the industry, right? An entrepreneur, an event manager, uh, a film composer, keyboard player, label manager, licensing manager, a lighting engineer, live performance artist, a lyricist, a sound engineer, a marketing manager, a mastering engineer. I've got just a few more. A music accountant, a music critic, a music director, a music lecturer, a music publicist, a music lawyer, and I know quite a few, a music photographer, and of course, a musician. So I only got to M there, Zoe, but there's a few. Uh, Pretty you know, what impressive. I, <laughs> what I, I, was would... gonna, I was counting and timing you, and I think that you'd more than met the challenge. Um, so for those of you out there, your challenge is finish the rest of the alphabet for John. Um, that was really impressive, and you ticked a few of those boxes in your career to date. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to seeing you tackle or bass player next, session bass player. Um, when we look at that variety that we just went through there, there are so many ways that you can take this and you anchor it back to that language and that appreciation for music. Um, what kinds of skills do you think are useful to people? Not totally sure where they're going, they love music, they may be considering study, they may have finished their studies. Um, what kinds of skills do you think are really imperative to start developing or to develop more for these sorts of jobs to be, to yeah, be successful? Zoe, Zoe, it's an interesting question. You know, every life in music is unique and every journey is made up of often many roles and projects. Um, uh, a lot of those are hybrids and, you know, new roles are being created probably as we speak and there are skills gaps all over that. You know, here at AIM, we've been helping prepare students for a career in music for a very long time and help them work out their career direction and the skills that they have and what that could lead to. And we've seen thousands of alumni leave AIM and take up really exciting careers all over the world across all different types of roles within the industry. And we've got very close links to the industry itself and we know what you know what they need from you. So across our, our campuses, our teaching facilities and the like, we're really here for the people on this call. Uh, and I guess I'd make it clear that the industry, it's hiring smarter and smarter people. This is not necessarily some of the jobs you might have thought traditionally uh, and you only need to look at all the, the digital platforms that have emerged, the way that we consume music these days. I think there's a quite a broad range of skills. And if you're an artist, it's helping you uh, to navigate that as well as you know your art to build an audience. And in Australia, I'd say the skills gap are really uh, quite quite diverse in domain and across the world, that's you know perhaps even broader. I mean, the music industry, it's a massive global business with millions of people, millions of segments and streams in that. And a lot of uh, different jobs exist within it. And a lot of people do choose to work for themselves and build their own business or work in the gig economy. And that means many jobs, uh, such as some of the teachers at AIM who perform and teach or work as a music lawyer, you know, uh, on the side. Uh, and there are also big jobs in big corporates. So there's no no real simple one answer to this. But in essence, you know, a career in music, it's very realistic aspiration. All of our academics here at AIM are very much proof of that. All of our alumni are proof of that. You know, a career in music offers you a, a, a lifetime of fulfilling creative work. And you just don't get that if you go and work, for example, at a bank. Um, it has the potential to bring you to sort of like-minded people and build great networks and potentially travel right across uh, across the globe. So, you know, aside from that, I think you, you'll be probably using all of those um, skills such as ambition and resilience and flexibility. And, and you know, if you, if you say yes and you turn up and you work hard, then you can really make... Uh, make your own uh, world of it all, Zoe? I think that's a really good point, John, and I think that that's the thing. Um, what what we can do in terms of one of those great steps to launch a career and build a sustainable career 
is that you make the most of those tools that you're given. So when you come to university, when you come to Australian Institute of Music, it is about uh, helping you make those connections to people in industry. It's helping you build those transferable skills and it's about helping you be able to practice and those kinds of things. So it really is about making the most of those opportunities. And John, I, I, we were talking the other day and we were talking about uh, looking at government employment at, in the United States, which is a major uh, source of cultural flows for music and other forms of culture. Australian government reporting, um, the UK, but also the industry benchmarking. We're seeing enormous growth in the music sector and that's in terms of consumption in terms of revenue but that means in terms of opportunity and so it's it's really quite exciting to see and what our viewers are seeing on the screen right now is you're seeing those examples um, actually of the kinds of facilities and stuff that we use at the australian institute of music to make sure that students get used to different environments and spaces to collaborate so our composers can come together with our performers together with our creative technology and audio and of course bringing them together with that business side with our amazing arts and entertainment management so that collaboration and forming those networks is a really good opportunity so um i think um we'll we'll come back to john on the screen now and we'll, st we'll stop looking at those because uh, i'm keen to ask john um, what what do you think has changed over the years in terms of embarking on a career in music and uh, arts and entertainment? Oh, look, there's plenty that's changed, Zoe, uh, but some things remain the same. I mean, I'd say uh, what I have noted, having spoken to you know thousands of artists across 30, 40 years, 30 odd years uh, in all countries of the world, uh, is that if they are seeking to be well known and have success with their music, and some are, some aren't, some just love the art that they create. Uh, but if, for example, fame comes, it often comes very, very fast. And I would just uh, say that I've noted that all of those that have underpinned their craft with some rigor and some learning, some discipline, and perhaps come into a place like AIM to really hone their craft uh, and to build networks that can last them for a lifetime in, in music, I have probably really, uh, profited the most uh you know from that and and you know you mentioned uh bachelor of arts and entertainment management it's interesting because when you think about the essential skills that we have and you mentioned transferable skills mm. there's playing music but there's marketing there's assisting with management there's helping yourself to get your own music out across the channels that have changed so much the way we make music's changed the way we listen to music's changed with streaming platforms and the like so whether you're learning the music business and entrepreneurship or business planning or digital promotions, publishing, uh, law, you know, all of those things uh, need a mix of your creative self and then mixing that up with the real practical uh, world training that you, you'll get at somewhere like AIM and perhaps the internship, the chance to go into the industry uh, with a job and hone those skills and perhaps uh, out of that come out with a really lasting career. As Zoe I've, said. I've got a great tip out of that for our audience straight from John. And that is next tip four breaking it and making it in the music um, careers is get yourself in a place where you're able to form those connections and have those opportunities to practice and what a great place to start is study somewhere where your teachers are part of the industry they are the makers they are the creators your classmates are the future and the current of music so i think that's a really great tip so get yourself in those places where you get connected. I know, John, a pet project of yours has been handpicked, which has been opportunities to put some of our, our emerging talent in front of the record labels and things like that. So we, I think, are going to move on to our next glimpse from another angle. And I think there's been huge tips there, but you have had the opportunity to work with so many people in different jobs and you've met so many People whose names can probably go on a stadium. What's been the highlight of your career so far, other than clearly being interviewed by me tonight? Oh, that's an interesting question, Zoe. Um, I've been lucky to meet a lot of great people in the industry uh, over the years and to speak to them and interview them and ask them questions about their life. 
but one of my heroes is James Brown, who's sort of the godfather of soul and, and of funk. And I was fortunate enough to be able actually to attend his funeral in New York at the Apollo Stadium in Harlem and cover that event as, as a music journalist, as well as really you know, soak up what was a really special day. So I treasure that uh, that moment, Zoe. I, I can honestly say I've never met anyone else that can say that they did that. And uh, I know that on day one for me, I was off to a bet gig and you're like, oh, I, I interviewed him at some other point. <laughs> so these are the amazing opportunity and the other creatives to meet. Thank you for sharing your experience and your varied career to date so far and your great advice. Thanks so much, John. Zoe, thanks for having me. And for everyone on the call, we'd love to see you here at AIM and uh, we hope you get that opportunity. Thanks. Thanks, John. So we've chatted to someone who has worked at the heart of uh, around New York, working with the record labels. But now I'm going to introduce some very special guests. They are the independent artists. And I'm really excited to bring them on because they can show you another way that you can approach a career in music. They've all done it and approached things differently. So let's get in, hear their experiences, get them to share their secrets, write down some notes, copy them, follow them, and make sure that you do follow along in the Q&A and in the chat, because we will be posting information so that you can check out their social medias, follow what they're doing. But I'm really excited to have joining me on the couch. She is one of the most incredibly talented artists that I've personally met and also another example of lots and lots of uh, getting out there and doing lots of different things. She's actually one of the academics at the Australian Institute of Music. She's also one of the most busy people in the music industry in general. I don't know that she sleeps. So please join me as I welcome the amazing Bronte O'Neill to the couch. Hey Bronte, hey, so how are you so doing? Here. Lovely yeah. to see you. <laughs> and joining us are two other incredible indie artists because we're gonna have a bit of a chat with you. And she is one of our alum and she is one of, oh, known for her energy. She's a pop rock goddess, she's incredible. And she lives, breathes, eats, if you can do that music. She is the amazing Sammy. <laughs> nice to have you here. Mwah. Join us on the couch. Thank you. And so we've got our incredibly busy academic and musician about town. We've got our alumni and incredible also rock chick musician about town. We also have a current student and she is incredible. She's actually a first year student and she has been actually releasing music since the age of 11. So please welcome my trifecta of incredible talent, Izzy Capo, joining us. Hey Izzy, I'll move over here too. So we're just gonna have a bit of a chat and I think there's some great insights for our audience in here. And I think we might actually start with you, Sam. Um, Sam, you, I think are a great example of the idea of you haven't needed to go through that, the route that we talked about at the start of, you know, hoping to get discovered out there. You've used the technology, you've developed other skills and you've taken things into your own hands to kind of help propel your career. Tell us a bit about what you're doing and your story. So I started studying music um, because I had this creative passion that I just couldn't ignore. Um, any longer and it all kicked off when I actually started studying at AIM. Um, I was accepted um, with an early entry and I just started living and breathing music as you said and I got all the tools that I needed, I met like-minded people and it just started this drive even more and I just I couldn't stop and I've now been able to release and songwrite for myself. I'm my own manager, I'm my own photographer, I'm my, my own publicist, I do everything myself and I got all the skills and the tools here from AIM. Wow, okay, tell me a little bit about that because um, once upon a time, I'm not sure that artists would necessarily think, oh, I might need to be a marketer, social media manager, art director, all of that. Um, exactly how did you develop those skills? 
I think it was the academics that we had here at AIM. They were forever learning and growing with us as artists and students. The industry's forever changing. We're growing together as a community. And I think if you have the academics here giving you the tools and, and preaching this stuff to you, you then listen as a student and you, you gain these tools and these insights. And it's the current climate of the industry is to share. No mm -hmm. one's holding anything back anymore. And you know, we, I, we were really lucky as students when I was studying. Um, I, I met my band members. I started playing in bands. Ooh, and we've actually got hey, yeah. young people <laughs> on the screen. Um, I, is this your first band and this how is, old yeah, are you? Yeah. This is my first band. I'm 19 here and all the people you can see on screen were all students and they're all alumni of AIM. Um, so I was a front woman of a band. We were called Bowling in Japan and on screen you can see our drummer and our two guitarists and our bass player. Uh, we were selling out shows locally wow. across Sydney. Um, every venue was packed. We were playing every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday night. Um, and I was, yeah, living and breathing it. I loved it. It was so much fun. And the venues in Sydney, there were 80 to 100 cap rooms and we were selling them out um, around Sydney. It was awesome. It was, it was a good time. And I wouldn't have been able to do this if I didn't come to AIM. I met all the people in this band from AIM and we were recording everything at AIM as well. We recorded our first single here. We released our first single at AIM as well. It was it was a time, it was great fun. Is that because of the facilities so you had everything that you yeah, needed we, that we, you might yeah, not we had normally it all have? Here. Yeah, we had it all here and we didn't have to, it was amazing because we didn't have to pull out so many, so much money out of our own pockets to fund this whole thing. And it was, mm -hmm. a, it was an opening and a gateway for us. We then met, you know, booking agents. We were playing, that's a photo from a, a mini festival that we played, um, just like a local live. It was incredible. It was so much fun. And, you know, these are core memories that I'll, I'll have forever. You can really see what a dynamic performer you are in these pictures. And um, it's really exciting to see how you've really been able to, I guess, steer your own career. It's really impressive. I think too, being a female in the current industry, it's really important to share your voice and everything that we're doing. And I've been very fortunate that I have people who are supporting me um, as well. So, you know, in the background, there's Max. He's a current student as well. I met him just being an alumni coming in for an event. Met Max, he's now playing guitar with me as well. So yeah, we've got some exciting things ahead. Awesome, actually on the screen, some really great promo shots. We were chatting the other day and you said, I said, wow, I love your styling. You've actually styled and art directed this, so this is stills from your next single coming up from the video clip. You even did your own styling and everything. I did, I did <laughs> my own styling, I did all of my own photography, I've done all my own graphics, I did it all. So my music video for Salesman is actually all shot on my iPhone, um, just wow. in the same spot. I've done it all myself, um, edited everything myself, and yeah, I'm, I'm passionate about being a solo artist and passionate about doing it all DIY and, and I'm here to prove that you can do it and it is possible. So she's made it and broken in herself and you can check out in our chat, you've got those links so you can follow Sammy Honeyset there, you can be ready for when Salesman drops, get out and see her live because she's incredible. I want to move on to someone, you mentioned doing it all, Bronte, you really do it all. I don't think she sleeps, it's another one of those. <laughs> and that's tip next for a sustainable career in music is learn how to have a million energy and not sleep. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Bronte, I'm gonna get you to share all the things you do. We were talking to, and this is a term that has been coming up a lot, the idea of a portfolio career. Yep. And you referred to what you do as that. And can you explain a little bit about that and, and I think this is a way that other than if, you, if you're a doctor, you have these preconceived ideas about a structured day or, or things like that. Portfolio career is really interesting. It is. Share, share with our audience about that and what you do in music. Yeah, a, a portfolio career is, uh, is pretty empowering actually. I didn't actually know the term portfolio career until I was here um, at AIM, um, until I was actually teaching. Uh, I just knew that when I came to AIM to study, like a, a lot of you coming here um, or interested in coming here, that I wanted to work in music. I had no idea if there were 
a, a multitude of careers in music or not. I didn't actually have uh, much idea of where I would be going. I just knew that I had to kind of figure out a way to, to make money so that I could make that my day job if possible, if that was possible. Um, and then about a year or two into AIM, this was a, a two year degree at, a time, at the time, I discovered well, I really want to do three things and if I can make that work for myself in the week somehow that I wanted to wrangle that together, um, I knew that I wanted to be an academic lecturer and so I went and studied my uh, postgraduate degree here at AIM actually afterwards. Um, that was something that was recommended to me by a teacher there at the time. Um, I knew I wanted to do that for two or three days a week and then I knew I wanted to be working in a studio as a songwriter, releasing my own music and writing for um, other artists. And then I knew I wanted to be a performer, so I wanted to gig on the weekends. And those things kind of expanded. The more I studied, the more I worked with my mentors, and the more that I honed in on my skills, specifically here at AIM, um, that changed and kind of evolved over time into something that I thought wasn't really possible uh, when I was a teenager and that was working in film music and specifically uh, you know bringing out a few different aliases as an original music artist to be able to uh, create music for film instrumentally and in soundtracks and you'll see there on the screen uh, one of the films that we've just brought out uh, The Red Shoes Next Step that was an 11 song soundtrack uh, all compiled by alumni Dominic Cabusi and myself uh, featuring solo artists from AIM as well. So there's actually a lot of AIM alumni on that soundtrack. And we met the director for that film at AIM. Um, we met uh, somebody that we worked with at Sony Music Publishing at AIM that was working in um, the marketing uh, entertainment management degree at the time. And this is a film that we, we did pretty much, I think a couple of years out of AIM when we were starting to release original music. We had a director hit us up and go, I love that song that you released online. Uh, it was about a half written song at the time. And they went, can you do that? Uh, can we use that for our film as a credit track? And we said, yes, if you let us try and write another song for it based on the characters of the film, uh, send us your script. And that was kind of our deal. And then we did that. And next thing you know, that's you know a career that we made from that. And we just don't want to stop. So. Now we're kind of working on soundtracks, film scores, uh, songwriting publishing, which is when you're writing music for, for other artists and that, uh, for films and for synth music, which is for TV and screen music. And yes, to address uh, the not sleeping part, that does mean that uh, my week is pretty packed because it is, it's between AIM and the studio and performing on the weekends. Uh, but that's what I always wanted to do and I've managed to wrangle it into a week and so that, that makes me very happy and uh, a lot of the people that you know took me to the next level to get to those steps that uh, mean that I can see my you know, films on the big screen and that I can do gigs like in this picture, um, original gigs that you know sell out, that is uh, people that I met from AIM that were teachers um, they were alumni, like Sammy was saying, alumni that I'd met even after AIM, um, just at different events, um, and my peers at AIM, so people that I met while I was studying here um, that I had made an impression on. I think that's something is that a lot of people overlook the fact when they're talking about making industry connections. Mm -hmm. You're forming the industry together as yes. classmates mm -hmm. and, and things Absolutely. like that. So that's a really critical thing and a really big opportunity when I guess you come together and study at somewhere specialist so yes. everyone is there about making it in that area. Um, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, a, a lot of the people I've worked with in the industry are AIM alumni and I always have a, a good giggle every time because you know when, I, when I'm talking about AIM and how much I love it, it's, it all comes from just you know a place of, of happiness seeing people out in the industry that have studied here in all of the different departments of AIM come together and create something as magic as you know a, a film that's now screening around the world and that's that's musicians that's people behind the scenes on on direction we have people that came to aim for audio that were actually working on the sound for that film um, and yet yeah, a bunch of singers and musicians on that soundtrack that was a network that i just would not have had had i had not come to aim and had i had not come to aim i would not have met Dom, who is my partner in crime for, for all things original music, publishing music, film music. We work together as a duo, which I think is arguably 
how I have time to do all of this mm -hmm. is that we kind of work together as a team and sometimes we'll, I'll be working on one film and he'll be working on the next film and you know we wrangle it all together and that's yeah a relationship that's changed my life as a, as a business partnership that was trimester one the very first week of AIM making that connection. Oh that's fantastic mm -hmm. and I think I really saw through a lot of uh, transferable skills that could take you anywhere there with yep. that ability I guess to multitask and collaborate and oh, absolutely. and um, yeah that's fantastic speaking of mm -hmm. study period one yes Izzy, <laughs> Izzy Capo <laughs> you are in your first year at AIM yes. and excitingly we've been talking like this was a, an end point you uh, Sammy and Bronte finished their studies and went on but it's not really the case um, both of them would have been working away at their career while they were studying and possibly before. However, I'd love to focus on that with you, Izzy, because before you started here, I believe it's something like 11 singles you'd released before. Mm -hmm. You started young. So I think this is about you can actually start building and establishing your career before you study and then you can use study to take it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Tell us how you got started. 11. <laughs> So yeah, I started writing original music at the age of 11 and released my first single at 14, but it was all off my own back. Coming from rural you know, Australia, New South Wales, there wasn't much opportunity to grab at. So you know, I worked my way around. My beautiful mum helped me out too, God bless her. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was just trying to find all of those opportunities that I could take you know, by the reins and just go at it because coming from such a small town, you just have to get out there and that's exactly what I did and you know now being 18 I've released 11 singles and collaborated with artists in America and you know just trying to get out there it's it's been an amazing opportunity and I've been to Melbourne and Byron Bay and now Sydney and just doing that by myself it was it was you know a challenge you know trying to get out there as a single artist and but now coming to AIM, I knew I wanted to come to AIM since year mm, nine. Because I, I am really interested because mm -hmm. feasibly your career is pretty <laughs> red hot. Um, why, why was study still important and that dream of coming to AIM since year nine, mm -hmm. why, why was that? I, I knew that having that education with the, the talent, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. it, was, it was needed because to get into the industry, you've got to know what you're doing as well. And, also, AIM has so many endless opportunities here, you know, being, being told that for so many years and finally seeing it is absolutely incredible, you know, there's so many links to the industry that we have here, so many facilities where we can just come in on a random Monday and record a single, you know, it's incredible the amount of opportunity I have here and it's just, mm. I feel like it's, it's needed for where I am right now in my life and to, you know, boom in the industry is the you know is the plan <laughs> brilliant speaking of in the studio on a monday morning um i believe that you are actually the latest signing of aim's own record label student red led record label 2030 records <laughs> latest signing so tell us a little bit about 2030 records and your time in the studio how's it all going and what's that process been like? Yeah, of course. I We just started recording my next single last week. It was the most incredible thing. I met with, you know, audio engineers and my manager, Christina, God bless her. <laughs> it's been absolutely amazing meeting the people who run 2030 and, you know, being able to use their, you know, ah, pardon me, <laughs> to use their creativity and blend with them and just to make my own production in the AIM facility is incredible. And they just give me so many opportunities. I've already been hit up so many gigs already. And being in my first term, that's just, you know, what I was looking for, just to come here and just be exposed to everything that AIM has to offer. I think that's a great tip for building a career that lasts and for breaking in. It is making the most of those opportunities. You're all great examples of making the most of those opportunities. And given yourselves all these opportunities, like so Sammy, you taking up those sorts of subjects, knowing that you wanted to steer your ship, um, Bronte really actively fostering those connections and making the most easy of getting involved in, in the record label. Um, I wanted to ask you all just a free discussion um, for the audience too. Did, did your musicality or 
did what you were thinking did it shift did did it launch other opportunities for you different things that you might not have ever thought of without coming to a collaborative environment with other artists and and learning I mean when I first auditioned for AIM I originally auditioned for the musical theatre program and I was actually wanting to do musical theatre um, and then I got here and and I went, you know what, I actually want to do contemporary performance. I want to be a session musician. And then I was halfway through my degree and went, oh my God, I love writing songs. I was never a songwriter. I never experienced that as, as a child, but it wasn't until I got to AIM that I was like, oh my God, this is, this is what I'm meant to be doing. This is me. This, yeah. is, this is what I want to do. And I would have never found that if I didn't come here. And you've got a new single dropping very soon. Yeah. So that salesman <laughs> that we saw on there, um, and make sure that you follow Sammy so that you can be there. Pre-sales, I think, are Yeah, there's available. a pre-save out now. Have a plug, plug yeah. your single. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, my next single will be coming out on the 9th of August. The pre-save is available on my social media. Um, and then I have a music video dropping as well, and hopefully you'll see it soon. August 9th. August, August 9th. 9th. Woohoo! Izzy, what about yours? Like, um... Are you far away? You're still in the studio though, mm -hmm. so we're still in early stages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no set date at the moment, but definitely stay tuned because it's coming soon. Yeah. Excellent. And have you? Are you shifting in your direction or anything since you've got different influences? So you were very much working, working alone, mm -hmm. and now, how has that sort of shaped things for yeah, you? Yeah, absolutely. I've definitely ch changed. You know, even my genre of where I'm going. I've kind of more found myself now at AIM and being exposed to every single genre here on campus. I just kind of struck into the R&B, soul, blues, jazz kind of genres and now that's just, I feel so comfortable in it and that's where I'm heading and I'm just so excited to see where it takes me. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Bronte, as the wise lecturer as part of your portfolio, what's your number one piece of advice for our viewers out there on, I guess, establishing um, a great career in music, entertainment, and arts. Wow, that's yeah, that's a big question. I think we are actually lay myself some little notes on that question here. I think ask your teachers a lot of questions, and mm. I, I remember you guys mentioning, you know, how much of that experience was um, your teachers coming to do a degree at AIM, and it was the same for me. It was just every class I did. Um, it was, you know, making some notes to, to come up to the teacher after class and, and just ask the extra questions behind mm. the scenes. You know, I know that there was this information, but how did you get that? And, and why do we need to know that? And kind of just drawing a well-rounded picture of everything that I was learning. And the teachers here just love their jobs because they're all out working in the industry like myself. So um, they're really enthusiastic about going that extra mile with you to you know, facilitate those extra questions and uh, kind of mentor you in that way. Uh, collaboration, you know, I think I said that a lot already, but yeah, just there's been so many incredible opportunities. In fact, everything I put forward on my bio for this, um, you know, very webinar came in some way from AIM and the people I met at AIM. Um, there were a few TV gigs on there and they were from AIM alumni and AIM teachers. So um, it, it just keeps kind of coming back to that. Find your collaborators here, teachers and students. Um, choose electives that you uh, wouldn't necessarily think that you're you know, great at or, or naturally fantastic at. For example, I did things like orchestration and film music, uh, 20th century classical music that I went, this is going to be super hard. Mm. Um, it's probably not going to be a high distinction for me for this subject, but it's going to be something that really facilitates my uh, creativity in the future. And now that's something that is just absolutely necessary to, mm. to my work as a brief songwriter because I have to be writing songs sometimes within one hour and I'm always calling upon those you know crazy subjects like orchestration, film music, um, you know doing things like jazz, doing soul music uh, where I need to actually go to the musicality of that genre to be able to compose mm. for that in two hours because you can't rely on just inspiration and creativity when it comes to creating at a full-time level like mm. that. Um, so I always come back to the electives that I chose and how that's actually fueled musicality. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of made a note to myself that this being coming to a music university is kind of a replica of what it feels like being in the industry. Um, you know, from day one, getting a kid to do a Bachelor of Music and I did contemporary performance um, like you guys. 
um, and it was making those connections from day one but showing my reliability and showing that I was here to work hard and practice turning up to all of the jams turning up to every event and being involved in that um, it's the same thing you're doing as soon as you leave AIM and you're just you know out there being present um, showing people that you're willing to to put in the work um, so it was very much a replica of, of how it feels to be in the industry and how to succeed in the industry coming and studying a degree like this that's excellent advice. So see, look what you could have if you were in a classroom here. You could not just be Izzy Capo's fan, you could be a <laughs> classmate and collaborator. You could go to a Sammy Honeyset gig and you could be taught by the amazing Bronte O'Neill. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences and advice. Make sure to follow these incredible, incredible artists and portfolio career pioneers. Please thank Bronte, Sammy, and Izzy. Woo! Thank you for having Thank us, you so Zoe. much, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to be all alone on this couch. But now, we're going to head into the future. Because um, one of the things you may all be told is you're going to work in jobs that don't even exist yet. So, you can prepare and learn to collaborate and build your transferable skills, which puts you in good stead to survive and thrive in careers that don't exist yet, or better still, be one of those people that does invent the career, uh, the future of music careers and industry. So now, our final interview is quite incredible. We're turning to the future, and we are going to be looking at the opportunities through the lens of music entrepreneurship. So please welcome the incredible, Tristan Forbes and she comes to us as one of the most foremost experts in entrepreneurship and business development and management. But Tristan, thank you for joining us. You happen to be, and we'll explain this to people, um, the co-founder and director of iHub, which is a music incubator, business incubator. And I'm excited to talk to you about inventing tomorrow in music. So welcome. Thank you. It's been a great session so far. I'm loving it. So we have a pretty different angle here. And I think that it really shows that your involvement in a career in music is as limited as your imagination. Can you tell us a little bit about iHub and music entrepreneurship and where that is a space that people could be thinking about in terms of establishing a right. career? Love to. Well, I think everyone's aware, especially in the music industry, how much it evolves over time. I mean, it wasn't so long ago we were buying vinyl and then CDs and now we're streaming. So, you know, you can just see how far just that one aspect of the industry has gone. So uh, it's really important to, you know, have an idea of, of what you want to do in the industry now or what, what, what the industry could perhaps give you now but not be limited by that because there's a whole lot of new things coming. At the iHub, we find uh, entrepreneurs that have got companies that or ideas that have got music sort of at their core or they're, they're improving a particular, solving a problem for the music industry and, um, and we help them grow their businesses. And we do that by surrounding them with people that can help them get there. So a lot of people do get a bit nervous when they, they hear about startups and scale-ups and entrepreneurship. Is it something I can learn? Can I learn to become an entrepreneur? Absolutely. It is It is absolutely a learnable skill. Um, there are processes that you follow. It's not like um, you have to have the idea right from the, you know, the, the perfect idea right from the outset. What often happens is you have a vision of, of something that you want to, to bring to life. And then uh, the skill of entrepreneurship is to test that in the market and, and to, to work with potential customers and figure out what that idea or product needs to become to be successful. So it's an evolutionary process. Wow. Um, when yeah. We were talking, I think, can we give people an idea about what are some of the businesses and, and ideas that the startups in iHub are thinking of, just so people can start visualizing? Okay. Well, where they could take it. 
I'll give you a little bit of background too of a couple of the founders. Um, one of um, the most successful startups we've had come through the iHub so far is called Music Health. That was founded by a DJ who knew the power of music to uh, to change your emotions. And uh, he's become a musicologist. And now he and uh, an ex-industry exec have started a company called Music Health, which is taking um, music therapy into aged care and dementia care. And so they have built a platform that enables uh, people to more easily find those songs that reactivate your brain. Um, and if you've seen any uh, dementia care, uh, you can see how effective music is at doing that. And so that's one of them. Another one, um, uh, one of our founders is, was in um, the uh, festivals industry. He's been worked on fe in festivals for 25 years. Uh, it's organisational chaos. And so he um, he he met uh, somebody that could help him build a platform. And now uh, they are selling this product to all festivals everywhere uh, across Australia. And now their 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 products even being used in the UK. Wow, um, it really does. It shows that music can intersect with literally any industry out there. So bringing that That's right. together and that kind of thing. So if we do have anyone with any great ideas out there, or if you do want to know about that, I urge you to contact iHub. Um, the more the better. We were talking the other day that um, music entrepreneurship is in its early days. And so it really is an exciting time. Um, you yourself, Tristan, do come from a music background. And yeah. then you've gone into, so this must be something you're particularly passionate about, finding the potential in music absolutely well when i first started um, i studied music right through high school and i play uh, clarinet and saxophone and uh, i had to make a decision between music and business uh, and i chose business because at that time i didn't have um, access to this webinar which would have shown me the extent of the career opportunities i could have had if i'd followed into my music and gone into even uh, a business and management degree within AIM, for example. We've also been talking a lot in with all of my interviews tonight, this sense of collaboration. We've talked about this idea about being able to be flexible as industries change. And I mean to say that there wasn't an app industry once upon a time. So it is true when you hear things like you might work in jobs that don't exist yet, there really seems to be um, an innateness in musicians and creatives in terms of already having a lot of these transferable skills. And I think a big one that's really coming through is collaboration. Um, what, what sorts of skills are you seeing or patterns or advantages that you're seeing people with creative backgrounds bring to entrepreneurship? Any patterns, anything that you're seeing? Yes, well, a lot of musicians are naturally entrepreneurial because, you know, as Sam, she's a classic case. She's, you know, she's building everything and doing everything herself. She's incredibly entrepreneurial. And so um, that's one skill plus creativity. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you, you hit a lot of roadblocks. And um, the brilliant thing about um, uh, creative people is they can figure out um, um, uh, usual ways of getting around those roadblocks. And, and that's a massive help. But um, one that I find uh, the most fascinating and, and quite a little bit more subtle is um, is collaboration. You know, entrepreneurship is a team sport and you need to be able to work with other people. Uh, and and um, I think that if you've come through an environment where you've come through concert bands and orchestras and, 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 and you know, com uh, rock bands, uh, you know, you know that it's about everyone working together to get that magnificent result. And uh, and so I think that skill really translates beautifully into entrepreneurship as well. Oh, see, so to our audience um, and our creatives out there, you are perfectly poised um, to be the next entrepreneur. Um, I think that it's really exciting, Tristan, to hear just how broad people can take it. And the takeaway that I wanna point out for our audience today, again, is you can bring other elements of your skill set, interests in other industries, bring them together where they collide and intersect. And you can think 
less traditionally outside of record companies and festivals and things like that. So it's been wonderful to talk to you, Tristan, about the people who are actually inventing the tomorrow. What a cool thing, um, being the innovators. And um, I think that we were also talking about it, not being the place of disruption and the disruptors anymore. Um, the face of entrepreneurship is a little bit different to that now. Um, that was something I found interesting. Yeah, to- that's absolutely right. And a lot of um, founders are also trying to connect artists more with their fans. That's a real theme that's coming through entrepreneurship and, and some of the startups in the iHub as well. So, you know, there's there's a lot of technologies that are helping to enable that, like blockchain and AI. And so it's a really exciting place to be. It really is. Well, I believe that we can be taught entrepreneurship with incredible people like you, Tristan. So again, call Liz if you've got some incredible ideas, want to learn more about the incredible ideas that are being concocted in iHub, please reach out to iHub and Tristan and be part of that Inventing Tomorrow. Thanks for joining us, Tristan. We really appreciate your time. (laughs) You may not hear it, but I'm sure our audience are giving you a big, loud clap. Well, that is all we have time for. And the big takeaways for you there is get involved, practice, put yourself in a situation to build your networks, which are the industry, Um, collaborate and think outside the box because there's all sorts of ways that you can shape your own career, take it into your own hands and take it in any direction that you want. Just start somewhere where you can be given all the right tools to start making that happen and to keep coaching you with that. I wanna bring one friend on to help me say goodbye to everyone today, Mr. Chris Cox from the student recruitment team. Welcome to say our final farewells, Chris. One thing that I think is clear hearing from um, Sammy, Bronte and Izzy is a great starting point or a great midpoint could be coming to study at AIM. So for those a bit excited thinking it is a good idea, tell us how can we do that? How can I come to AIM? Absolutely. Thanks, Zoe. So at AIM, you can apply an audition all year round. We have three intakes per year in February, May and September. Uh, We have, you can apply through these easy steps. Number one is choose your course. We understand that uh, the students have different creative interests and different career ambitions. So it's important that they choose the right course and our recruitment team can help and advise the students uh, by scheduling a Zoom or a phone call to help with this decision process. Step two is to complete the application online through our website, uh, through our student portal. And our student recruitment team will then follow up with the student and prepare them for the next step, which is our audition. So the auditions uh, is an awesome opportunity to showcase and talent and demonstrate the suitability uh, for our course. If you're located in Melbourne and Sydney, you'll attend a live audition. Students outside Sydney and Melbourne, or our international students can submit uh, an audition and a portfolio online. Uh, if, if your audition is successful, AIM will provide a letter of offer with the finer details that students sign and accept. And that's it. Come they've join become, with us. They've, they're a part of the AIM community. That's brilliant. And perfectly, if anyone is worrying about auditions, great news. On September the 13th, we'll be back with more experts to look at how you can overcome performance anxiety and nail your performance when it matters. So not just for auditions, but maybe if you've got exams coming up um, or you just wanna feel less nervous before a gig, we will be giving you lots of great techniques that you can use for all of those situations. Uh, And importantly, you can have a chat to Chris and the team about all of the different ways that you can shape an incredible career, whether it's creative technology in audio, whether it's musicology, composition, musical theatre, arts and entertainment management, and of course, contemporary or classical performance, have a chat to the team about that. Um, And if you are in Australia, visit us on Open Day or come for a tour. Um, We're so excited. We hope that this helped you start thinking 
about the different ways that you can approach a career in music and the important one to sustainability are your networks, developing those transferable skills and getting out there. So good luck, make music with us anytime. We live, breathe, eat music, if you can even do that. So thanks for joining us and make sure to check out Izzy and Sammy's new singles dropping soon. Bye for now and thanks for joining us. Mm-hmm. <laughs>